Jill Stein, and she's a Russian asset. And then we saw the whole Russiagate thing kind of explode, which ended up being absolutely nothing. So um, she essentially says that she lost the campaign because of Russia, that it all comes down to him. So you could imagine, if she feels this way legitimately, that she desperately wants revenge. She wants to take Putin down. And this is really where Tulsi Gabbard comes in. Because Hillary Clinton, uh, she's not running for president. You know, that day is past, at least we hope. And she ended up giving all of her resources to Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris, first of all, they already had a connection. Maya, Kamala Harris' sister, was one of the main advisors for Hillary Clinton's campaign and crafted her presidential platform. So they already had this big connection right there. But Hillary Clinton goes and further supports Kamala Harris by essentially opening up her Rolodex to Kamala. And a lot of the top donors to the Clinton campaign ended up donating to, to Kamala Harris. So she gets a lot of her donors. But the real important connection that Kamala inherits is she inherits Hillary Clinton's foreign policy advisory team. Namely, she ends up getting this woman, Michelle Flournoy, who is the former undersecretary of defense under the Obama administration. She also worked in the Bill Clinton administration. And she ended up becoming the founder and former CEO of a think tank called Center for New American Security. And this is where it gets really important. Now, Kamala Harris inherited quite a few other foreign policy advisors uh, from Hillary Clinton. But this one in particular is really important because this group, the Center for New American Security, has somehow figured out a way to gain a serious foothold in American foreign policy. They are arguably the leader when it comes to crafting foreign policy ideas um, and, and influencing our foreign policy. So the, this group was founded in 20, uh, 2007, right at the end of the Bush administration. And essentially, their expressed goal was to influence the future presidents. And really, what it comes down to is they were trying to keep the Bush administration's policy, the warmongering policy, which we saw was so great under Bush, uh, to continue that going with a new Democratic president. So Michelle Flournoy is a Democrat. Her co-founder was a Democrat. But they stacked this, this think tank with a bunch of big names like General Petraeus and James Clapper, and a lot of people who worked under the, the Bush administration, the Reagan administration, Clinton, and they, they made this bipartisan think tank so that people would be more open and receptive to it, which was really smart. But here's the kicker. This Center for New American Security is largely funded by the military industrial complex. And I mean, their biggest donor is Northrop Grumman. They've got Boeing, Raytheon, uh, Lockheed Martin. They also have some of the big security firms that are funding this think tank. And uh, basically, a lot of companies who have a lot of invested interest in gaining large contracts from the Pentagon. So the Center for New American Security, they've released quite a few different think pieces uh, to try to influence foreign policy. And one of their big, the things that they advocate for are preemptive war. So they're really big on going in first. So they're, they would be the ones that are like, we got to take out Iran before Iran gets a nuke. Uh, they were really big on uh, maintaining troops in Iraq. They claimed that they were against the original invasion of Iraq, but they heavily advocated for an extended stay. Even when the Obama administration was saying, you know, we need to get out of there and ramp down troops, they were saying, no, 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 we need to keep troops there. They also were big advocates of the war in Afghanistan. They're big advocates of essentially what they call unconventional warfare. Um, uh, you know, they're in various different forms of influence, be it uh, sanctioning or uh, or supporting kind of rogue elements inside of a nation to keep the nation destabilized. That's what it, it's it's looking like. That's what they definitely support. Um, and they have so much influence, in fact, that there's only about 30 people that are involved in this think tank. And yet Obama hired seven or eight of them to be in his cabinet, in his uh, in his administration. So um, they have a huge amount of influence and they continued that influence with Hillary Clinton. When Hillary was running for president, they were backing her se uh, seriously and she was really relying on them for all of her foreign policy ideas, even during the time that she was secretary of state for the Obama administration. So here you have this think tank 
which is filled with people from Bush and Clinton, hence where this whole Bush-Clinton uh, foreign policy sort of uh, ideology stemmed from. It is all one and the same, and it's all funded by the military industrial complex who have no desire to reduce their contracts. In fact, the Center for New American Security advocates regularly for increased military budgets, for new technology, for increasing troops. Uh, they just want bigger and better military. They're all about it. So Michelle Flournoy, who was the founder and the CEO of this group, becomes one of Kamala Harris's top foreign policy advisors. So she gets uh, she inherits this woman from Hillary Clinton. So you could see here what's going on, right? Hillary Clinton is thinking, I want to take down Putin. He's got to go because of what he did to me. You know, she's really uh, seeking some big revenge. And she sees Kamala Harris as the gateway to this. If she can get Kamala Harris into the White House, then Kamala Harris could go and do a variety of things to hopefully punish Putin. Well, Tulsi Gabbard kind of uh, dashed those hopes during the debate when she completely stabbed Kamala Harris and took out her career. And this infuriated Hillary Clinton. She's already mad at Tulsi. She doesn't like Tulsi for stepping down from the DNC, basically saying that it was, uh, you know, that they were favoring Hillary Clinton, that they weren't being fair. She goes off to endorse Bernie Sanders. So she's already not Hillary Clinton's favorite person. Uh, and then Tulsi Gabbard is also spreading the message of ending our terrible foreign policy, which Hillary Clinton is largely responsible for. So Tulsi Gabbard is actively out there campaigning against and spreading this message even before she was running for president of being against this terrible foreign policy and against all of these regime change wars, against meddling in foreign, in foreign governments. And this also upsets Hillary Clinton because that's definitely against her uh, power grabbing, warmongering agenda, ultimately, which is the agenda of CNAS. They want to maintain America's stronghold in the world as the world's police. They're very much big into that, and uh, they pretty much admit that. So Tulsi Gabbard taking Kamala Harris out, who Kamala Harris had in, that's where Hillary Clinton put her investment. She invested in, in Kamala and now she's upset that Tulsi Gabbard comes along again and dashes her hopes. And this is where Hillary Clinton decides that she is going to start seeking revenge on Tulsi by smearing her, by calling her a Russian asset. This is somebody who is serving in our armed forces, somebody who has deployed twice, who is a member of Congress. This is ridiculous. And all it's doing is exposing Hillary Clinton. You know, I wondered, I wondered during this last debate who, Hillary, who uh, Tulsi Gabbard was going to take out next, right? I think many of us were wondering, you know, it was Kamala Harris. She ended her career. So who is next? And a lot of us, you know, I got to say, we underestimated Tulsi. We set our sights way too low. We were thinking maybe it was going to be Joe Biden or, Hill, or uh, Elizabeth Warren. I suggested that she go after the DNC and their corruption. But no, oh, no, no. <laughs> we were aiming too low. She decides to take out Queen B herself, Hillary Clinton. And she is, she's exposing her. She's exposing her as the warmonger that she is. And it's just becoming obvious. The more that Hillary Clinton opens her mouth when it comes to Tulsi Gabbard, she's just showing herself as somebody who is bitter, petty, and with terrible foreign policy ideas. So this is really where it all comes down to. Hillary Clinton's her, her vision of getting back at Vladimir Putin, of taking him down for what she believes is him ruining her career and dashing her hopes as president, him meddling and him uh, supporting, you know, she, she's all into this big conspiracy now that he is now backed and colluded with Trump and his campaign and Jill Stein and now Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, it's just crazy. It's lunacy. She's lost in her own world of, of a bitterness. And it's showing Tulsi Gabbard is exposing this. So that is really the backstory there of why exactly Hillary Clinton is smearing and going after Tulsi Gabbard. And secondly, how we've ended up with this really terrible foreign policy in the United States, how it is all one and the same, whether you be a Democrat or Republican, it's all the same because they're all being guided by this one same think tank amongst a few others. But this is a very powerful one that is uh, showing how these think tanks that are supposed to be independent, they're supposed to be think tanks, right? They're supposed to be places where people get together and they intellectualize on what's the best path forward. And meanwhile, they're funded by the military industrial complex. So this is why we can't end our wars because the military industrial complex has got a, a foothold on these people that uh, are, are end up getting jobs in the administrations. 
And this think tank, CNAS, has even uh, boasted about how they are not only a think tank that likes to come up with new policy ideas, but they're, they're a grooming ground for talent that could then go and affect real policy uh, in the administrations that they serve. This is why we have our horrible foreign policy. This is why it's failed, uh, and why we can't seem to get out of these endless wars, because the military-industrial complex has got a foothold in our government.